In this tutorial in CyberLink Power Director, we're going to look at some improvements and changes in the most recent version of PowerDirector 365. We're going to look at four things. First is changes in the preview layout, also text alignment, vertical or horizontal, something about the panel redesign, how you can move them around, and an update on background removal. So we're going to deal with those four issues together in this short tutorial. First thing we're going to look at is the preview layout. It's more common today to use stuff that's related to, say, an iPhone or Android phone in terms of your video. You see this increasingly on YouTube, for example. So if you want to make a project that way or to see that kind of content differently, there's a new panel in the preview area. I'm going to take this picture that was shot on a smartphone. And when I just drag it down in the normal horizontal 16 by 9, this is what I see. But you have other options now. If you look below the preview screen on the right, you have this box with these lines on it. It's called Layout. Let's see what happens when we change it. The default here is Landscape. Let's go to Portrait. When I go to Portrait, it changes how it looks on my screen and I actually can see more of it in this direction. But if I want to see it the way I'm going to produce it, if I'm going to produce it this way, I'll go from 16 by 9 to 9 by 16. And when I do that, my project orientation has changed, but you notice I have some black area down here. Now what I can do is I can actually take this and I can change it to fill the screen if that's what I want to do. So there it is right in the middle of the screen. I've slightly enlarged it so I have no black space. So if I'm going to produce a 9 by 16, this allows me to see it better. I can even do this changing the orientation here. I can go back to landscape and I lose some territory. And I can also go back to just a floating option if I want and move it around anywhere I want, no matter what my orientation is. Now, I don't have to switch my project to 9x16 to do any of this, but that's one of the ways in which it is especially helpful. Now, that brings up another thing that I'd like to look at. This is panel redesign. Uh, the default layout is with the panel with all your objects here on the left, the preview on the right, and the timeline at the bottom. In the new design, you don't have to leave it that way. I'm going to right click on this area here and, you, and choose Dock Undock. And it's going to put it down here. Now you can change it anywhere you like. Let's do the same thing with a timeline. I'll right click and use Dock Undock. And I'll take the other part and do Dock Undock. And now what I can do is I can move these around any way I want and resize them. And that way I'll be able to adjust the, the components any way I like. I've got the three windows and I can cause them to share the screen any way I prefer. And it will remember where you place them. Now to, to make them go back to the default, you just click on the upper right corner, the arrow into the box. And it will change that one and this one and we'll click on this one and now it's back to my default and I'll shrink my timelines and right now if I go want to go back to the other way I'll go dock undock on this panel dock undock on the next panel right click and all of a sudden it's back the way I wanted it so you can customize the panel location simply by right clicking using dock or undock and that easily is the way you can get back to the default layout. The third thing I like to look at is a new feature called vertical text, which really isn't new after all. Let's look at that a bit. Let's say I'm working in this section here and I want to do some animation. Let's go back to the 16 by 9 here for my project preview. And I want to put the name of the Eiffel Tower here. So I go to my titles room and I'm going to go to my custom ones. I have one called Eiffel Tower. Here it is. Let's take this and I'm going to drag this down to a lower track. And now I have Eiffel Tower. Let's, let's assume I want to edit it. I'll click on the edit button and I can now just make it vertical. 
very easily. I just click anywhere in it and I can look at this new icon here and it says the text is horizontal. I click down and I'll click the vertical and it made it vertical. It makes it vertical reading from top to bottom. If I want it from bottom to top, I can rotate it like this and now I have it the other way. I want it back the way it was. Oh, I clicked back, but because I'd rotated it, it rotated it. So there I have it horizontal again. Now the thing about this that surprises me is that without using this tool at all, I can I can rotate the text any way I want 360 degrees. I'm not sure why we have a little button now that will automatically do it. If you like that, fine, but basically you can rotate the text before. That's what they've added. It's supposed to be a new feature. Make of it what you will. We'll close out of that and go to another element I want to show you. They've upgraded the background removal tool. They've given you more control over it. I'll take this gal and put her on track number two. And let's see how well the background removal tool works as it's been modified since its introduction about five months ago. If I click on this and click on edit, one of the options I have is called background remover and it highlights it. If I click on it, and I can choose a blurred background, which actually gives me my best results or a transparent background. Now you have three controls now where before you only had one. You have a blur degree, an edge feather, and an edge thickness. Let's look at and see what these do. When I look at the edge thickness here, you notice it, it includes more and more outside the shape. If I take it down too much, I begin to shrink the person and I'm removing pixels from the individual, which is probably not what you want to do. The edge feather is the one that gives me the degree of feather between that person. If I go all the way to the left, you note the edges are really sharp. If I go to the right, they're softer. And then we have blur degree, which only works if you're blurred but you have to use a combination of these. Let's leave this at about here. It looks good in there, but notice what I have going on here. It's always trying with each frame to, to analyze what is the exact edge of her. And this is one of the better images that you could use, but you still have some of this. What causes that? One of the things it does, let's go to blurred, and you're going to see where there's motion around the edge of the person. You're going to see that that action here. Either the camera's moving or something else is moving here and there's a change. So if you have nothing around the person, you won't have this kind of crawly looking edge around the individual. That's what's causing it. So when you have motion at the edge of the, the image it captured, you have this kind of thing. That's why I would tend to say that blur tends to work a little better than transparent, but sometimes you want a transparent background. Another thing that works is if you have kind of a busy background to it. Let me close this out and we'll just take this picture here and increase its duration so it matches her. And now if we put her in front of that, I'm going to go back to the picture and I'm going to click on the eye. I'll do AI background remover. Let's go to transparent. And if I do this one, you still have a little bit of that crawly look on it, but because you have a little more noise in the background, it's not completely one color or anything, it makes it a little easier to use this picture as a background. And really I should take the picture and, and make it larger uh, to make it work. That's one of the ways in which you can do that that makes it a little friendlier. Now there's a lots of photographs you can't use well. Let me go give you some examples. Let's take this video here and put it on track number two. And I'm going to edit it as well. And we'll go to our background removal and turn it on. And we'll go to transparent and watch what happens when we have this one. Here we have a lot more motion around the individual. And so you have all these things that happen that make it look like it's <laughs> Clothing is crawling with insects. Kind of a surreal kind of a look here. Let's go back to one of the frames. Again, you can change the thickness of the edge. And again, if you get it too small, obviously it doesn't look very good. And then you can adjust the feathering all the way to really crisp to slightly blurred. 
But if I go get back again to my blurred option, you notice I'm going to have movement with this person here and movement around here. And then those frames where you have that movement, that's where you're going to have a little bit of that crawly stuff. It's a lot better than anything we've ever had before, but it does have some limitations. So I thought I'd alert you to that, but we do have more control. I think they're going in a good direction, but that's a look at several of the changes, improvements or updates that they're promoting in the current version of CyberLink PowerDirector 365.